The cost of your July 4th cookout up anywhere from 11 to 17 percent from just one year ago. The price of everything, hamburgers, hamburger buns, cheese, pork chops, chicken, even lettuce all on the rise. A complete spread could set you back 70 bucks. Shoot. It's probably 200 bucks here in New York City. You might remember last year when the White House bragged about saving you 16 cents from the 2020 July 4th picnic. Joining me now, Chairman and CEO of United Refining Company, Gristides and D'Agostino Foods and Red Apple Group, John Katsimatidis. Uh, John, always great to see you. How much have prices eased at all, these price increases in the last few weeks? Well, I will give you, uh, Dougie and I will give you the good news and the bad news. Okay. Uh, the prices are going to still go up during Fourth of July weekend. Uh, meat, poultry are up another 30 percent. Eggs, dairy continue to rise. That's the bad news. The good news is I believe we have reached peak oil prices. Uh, I believe the 125, 130 level was, was the peak level, and those prices are easing right now. Uh, and what does that mean? Is that means that maybe inflation is going to go down. And what I'm saying to uh, Chairman Powell uh, is to look at it very carefully and don't panic the country by continuing to raise interest rates, because that will destroy the rest of the country. That will destroy the real estate industry. That will panic other industries. Uh, I believe that uh, we are capable of producing much more oil in North America, like I've said before. Canada is making a commitment that they can, uh, they committed to me yesterday that they can bring in more oil from Canada. They can bring in as much as 400,000 barrels immediately, uh, maybe 600,000 barrels by uh, 2023 in January. Uh, the United States is, was producing as much as 13 million barrels uh, pre-COVID. And what does that mean? And other estimates says we can do as much as 15 million barrels a day. Mm -hmm. If we opened up North America, and uh, produce those extra barrels and make an announcement that the American oil industry is no longer the enemy of Washington, then you know what happens? The fear uh, equation, the, the, what's driving world crude oil prices is fear that something else is going to happen and that America is turning their back on their own industry. If we open up North America, open up Canada, open up Alaska, and uh, produce more barrels, and just put that signal out there, the fear equation will go away. And uh, Chairman Powell, let's not panic the rest of America's industries. Mm -hmm. I, I think that, that you can, if you want to increase interest rates a little bit more, do it, but don't panic the industry and the panic has been driving the bus for the last year or two right. uh, after COVID. And uh, that's what I'm concerned about, Dagnan. John, I want to ask you, you recently spoke with the deputy commissioner of the NYPD, the police department here in New York City, John Miller, on the Supreme Court striking down uh, the concealed carry law here in New York, striking down just a part, especially part of it, that you had to show a proper use, like why do you want a concealed carry permit? He noted it could cause a huge jump in criminals getting their hands on guns, turning the state into, quote, the Wild East. Well, the criminals have guns. It's law-abiding citizens who are not allowed to carry them. John. Dagnan, Dagnan, 97 percent of the people that have legal guns are licensed by city, state, or federal never, ever commit crimes. It's the criminals. It's the criminals that always have access to guns. And they, we have to put them away. Uh, I've told the mayor, Mayor Adams, I had Mayor Adams on my show last week, and mm -hmm. there are... Uh, 3,000 violent criminals with repeat offenses in New York City. 
If you put away those 3,000 criminals with violent offenses, then New York City will be back to normal. It'll, the people will come back to work. They'll take the subways again. They'll take the buses again. And I believe I'm supporting Eric Adams in, in, in his uh, uh, wanting to bring New York back. Don't forget, pre-COVID, we had 66 million tourists in New York City. Right now, what's that Brooklyn word, bupkis? We don't have the, anywhere near it. And it's about opening up New York, getting rid of the fear factor. And I tell the people in Albany, and there's an election today. There's an election for the state assembly, and AOC is running uh, many assembly uh, candidates. And what I'm saying is don't vote for, for the people that want panic in our streets. Don't vote. You know, vote for the eight and a half million New Yorkers that want peace and tranquility and love New York. Don't vote for the 3,000 criminals that, that all they right. want is chaos and steal as much as they can. John, great to see you. We could talk about so much from energy, oil, food, New York City crime. Always a pleasure. John Katsimatidis, thank you so thank much you for so being much, here. Thank you so much,